inside this box is a really interesting little gadget that I want to show you today. This is a magnetic tape viewer. With this, you can actually see the audio that's recorded on a tape. I'll demonstrate how it works with this quarter inch tape. First, I'll lay a recorded section of the tape out flat, and then I place the viewer down on top of it, making sure I put it on the recorded side of the tape. And within a couple of seconds, the pattern of the audio that's on the tape appears in the window. Now, as you can imagine, this is not the easiest thing to shoot. So I've had to break out the macro lens for this video, but let's take one more look at that. So popping it down on the tape, I can determine that this is a four track recording. I can also see that it's more than likely two separate stereo programs, one going in each direction as track one matches up with track three and track two goes with track four. Now you might be wondering how much audio in time we're looking at here. How long would it take to play that section of tape? Well, you probably aren't wondering that, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So this tape is on a seven inch reel, which is four tracks. So most commonly recorded at a speed of seven and a half or 3.75 inches per second. Or in the case of my reel to reel, that's listed in metric as 19 or 9.5 centimeters a second. And playing the tape reveals that it's been recorded at that slower speed. So it's a 9.5 centimeters per second recording and the window on the tape viewer is three centimeters across, which means that that's approximately a third of a second that's visible in the window. Now, moving on to how it works. Well, it's quite likely you're familiar with a toy like this. The idea being that you use a magnet to manipulate the iron filings that are contained inside the clear plastic window. Well, imagine if those iron filings were much, much finer and also suspended in a liquid. And then rather than requiring a magnet on a stick to move them, they'd be fine enough to be attracted by the much weaker magnetic signal that's recorded on a tape. The magnetic attraction of a tape, whilst weak, is still strong enough to pass through the thin metal base of the viewer and manipulate the ultra-fine suspended ferric oxide particles to reveal the recorded pattern. Now, the earliest mention I've seen of this device is in this issue of Broadcast Engineering from February 1964. It appears on the new products page for that month. A number of potential uses are listed, including amongst others, checking for head alignment, track placement and dropouts. It also says it can be used to determine if tools, tape heads or tape guides are magnetized. The price in 1964 was listed as $50. With inflation, that's a little over $400 nowadays. Looking at the patent number that's shown on the viewer reveals that this was granted in 1961, but it was applied for in 1958. Originally though, the use case was a little bit less certain. In the document, it states that magnetic recorded tape is often criticized because the signals are invisible. It states this has hampered sales due to a reluctance from some organizations to move away from punch tape and cards where the data was visible to the eye and therefore could be verified by a person. The proposed apparatus shown in the documentation is also significantly different in design to the finished product. Now, initially, I wondered if 3M had purchased this patent and adapted that original idea for their viewer. But you can see on the patent it was 3M's from the beginning, or as it's written in full here, the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company. And the primary name that's listed on the application, Robert J. Youngquist, was a career 3M employee. He was later inducted into their Carlton Society, which is kind of 3M's Hall of Fame, and that was in 1991. The magnetic tape viewer that he and his colleagues devised 33 years earlier, though, must have remained on the market for a number of years, as it's mentioned again in this magazine article from 1973. By this point, though, they're suggesting that you could use it to check the head alignment of an 8-track tape. So let's have a look at one of those. Now, this one was quite a bit more difficult to get a good picture of. One issue is that the tracks are really fine and we're also trying to capture a 0.3 second window when all of those eight tracks are playing something loud enough to show up clearly. But you can just about make out here all of the eight tracks on this tape. The eight track I'm using is a stereo tape, so that means it consists of four stereo programs and those are made up of pairs of tracks. And they're laid out on the tape as tracks one and five, 
2 and 6, 3 and 7, and finally 4 and 8. It's perhaps a little bit easier to see it on this next shot where the fourth program is currently silent. So that means we can see, for example, that tracks 2 and 6 are definitely a matching pair. OK, let's look at something else. An old store loyalty points card. Popping the viewer on here, and you can clearly see the magnetic signal that's recorded on the strip. And next, let's move on to a compact cassette. Now, this one showed up particularly well. You can clearly see the two stereo programs, one for each side. And this also shows how much of a gap is left down the middle of a compact cassette tape. And now here's a real scenario I use the viewer for. A while ago, I bought this actor's master tape. It's from a talent agency. It was used to showcase actors' voices for potential advertisement jobs. Well, from playing it back on my four track machine, I could determine the speed of the tape. And also I now know that it's not a four track as the recording only plays one way, but I wasn't sure if any of it was in stereo. Well, to find that out, I can put the viewer on and putting it down on the tape shows that it's actually a mono recording, just one track all the way across the width of the tape. And to break things up for a bit, here's a brief sample of a clip from that reel. You could go driving with your baby in a car that's kind of maybe, but think how good you'd feel if you were sitting behind the wheel of a legend. The Datsun Z. You go floating down the street thinking, ooh, life can be sweet, because you know you have everything other people could wish for. The Datsun Z. Let's have a look at a couple more things through the viewer. This is a two-track stereo tape recorded at 19 centimeters a second. So just like that advert reel, what you're looking at here is approximately one-sixth of a second of audio. Now, the viewer doesn't work with everything, though. Here's what a DCC looks like, and there's nothing visible. It's definitely a recorded section of audio, too. It's no surprise it doesn't show up, though, because a DCC has 18 incredibly thin digital tracks across its width. It's just going to be too fine for it to register. And next, here's what the recorded section looks like on a VHS tape. But the only thing that's visible this time is the control track that's along one edge. And finally, one neat touch that I wanted to show is that when the viewer is placed back in its case, it displays the 3M logo. Therefore, if you ever do see one of these in a shop, you can test whether it's working without having a magnetic tape with you. A word of warning, though, the ferro-oxide in the fluid can settle to one side over time. This initially was the case with mine, but after a couple of minutes of gently massaging the screen in a circular motion, the solution dispersed evenly again. That said, you'd be very lucky to find one of these for sale. I had a save search on eBay activated for one of these for four years before one turned up for sale. However, while researching for this video, I found that there's a company making a modern day equivalent. So if you are interested, I'll put a link to them in the video description text box. And I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this fascinating little device here today. But that is it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.